Hey guys, welcome back to my small engine repair channel. Today I'm going to show you how to replace the fuel tank on your 5 horsepower Briggs and Stratton engine. You'll often find these engines on rototillers and one of the most common reasons for replacing the fuel tank is that it has built up rust inside of it. Sometimes no matter how hard you try to get rid of the rust it comes back, dirties up your carburetor each time you go to use your equipment and it's a real aggravation. So what I recommend to people is to just replace the fuel tank with a brand new one and put it away properly when you store it for the winter months. And you can do this by keeping the fuel tank full of fuel along with some stabilizer in it. So to start this operation today I'm going to remove the 2516 screws here that hold the air cover on. I'm also going to remove the four 516 bolts here. Carburetor and this will give you a good view of all the linkages and where they go. You may want to take a picture of this or refer to this video if ever you do this repair. Now at this point I'm going to remove a 3 8 bolt that's right underneath the fuel tank. And it's right down here where my finger is. Now what works really good to access that bolt easily is a U-joint where you connect your socket. As you can see there's not much room in there. Now at this point I'm going to remove the two torque screws. There's one here and one over there. You're going to need a number T20 torque screwdriver to remove these. And what's going to happen now is the whole choke and throttle assembly will come off. So you'll want to remove these screws completely. And I'm going to remove this one with a pair of needle nose pliers. And take note of where all the linkages are before you remove this part. So now I'm just going to bring it up. And to get this linkage off, I'm just going to tilt it like this. Now all that's left holding this is the switch wire over here. And to remove that wire, just simply push down on this part and it's going to slide right out. And now you've got this part off completely. So all that's holding everything there now are the two bolts over here at the intake. Now it would be easier to remove that bolt if the muffler was off, but I usually try not to remove the muffler because sometimes the bolts are pretty rusty, they can break in the block. So if I can do this operation without removing them, it's much better. And what I've got here is a number T30 torque screwdriver that's going to fit right into that bolt. Sometimes these bolts can be on there pretty tight. But I managed to get this one off just with the torque screwdriver. Now since I can't fit a torque screwdriver to remove the other bolt here, I'm going to use a ratcheting wrench to get in there and remove it. So I'm just going to reach in here and these ratcheting wrenches work really good in instances like this. And as you can see now the gas tank is coming completely off. There are still a few linkages held on so I'm going to have to show you exactly how these come off. And you'll have to finish taking it off by hand once it gets loose enough. Now at this point I have to remove this bolt over here just to get this linkage here off. So I'll just hold the fuel tank at this point because nothing else is holding it to the engine. Now that the plastic part is off I'm going to remove the top linkage here. So I'll just bring it back like this. And now it'll make it easier to get the other linkage off. And now I'm going to put this linkage back on. And before things come apart here, I'm going to put the shoulder bolt back that holds the plastic part. Now when you go to disconnect the fuel tank, you may notice that there's a small spring still connected at the bottom. And it just came off now. There it is. And I'm just going to show you where that spring was connected. It was connected right in here. So the tank was on there, that spring was there. So basically I just pulled it out like this and it came off. It may come off by itself, but now you'll know if it does come off by itself exactly where it goes again. And now at this point I've got the whole gas tank off. And now you've got that other linkage that I unhooked earlier. As you can see it's hooked up down here in the bottom. There's two holes here and it's connected in the far left hole. And I've just set the switch wire here to hold it up until I get the new tank. And the intake gasket here looks good so I'm going to be reusing that. And you can see the fuel coming out of here, it's brown, just like the rust. Now at this point in the operation it's time to remove the fuel tank and you're going to need the T20 Torx screwdriver. And there's a Torx screw over here and there's another one here as well that needs to be removed. 
And when you remove this one, the little clip here that holds the tube is going to come off. And now at this point you'll have to disconnect this linkage from the plastic bushing. So I'm just going to grab a pair of needle nose pliers and pull. Again you want to take note of where this linkage is connected at the bottom here. And I forgot you also have to remove this screw over here. And this is a much longer screw than the other ones. And I'll basically just pry the carb off and pull up gently. And as you can see it's very dirty. This is caused by the rust inside the fuel tank. This will all need to be cleaned before I put it back on the new tank. Also I'm going to tie up this linkage over here for the choke because it looks like it wants to come out of here. This will be less aggravating when I go to put it back together if they're tied exactly the way they should be. So these linkages should stay in that position until I put the car back on the tank. And I'm going to leave the spring on here and I tied this linkage here as well until I get the new tank. So take a look inside here you can see rust. You can see that the foam is all deteriorated. And at the bottom it looks like heavy rust. In the meantime I'm going to clean the carburetor. I'm going to start by peeling off the old gasket. And I'm also going to put a new diaphragm that is behind this cover here. So with the number T15 Torx screwdriver you can remove all the four screws here. And this cover should come right off. It might be stuck on there a little bit. If that happens you can just pry gently at the end here. Also there's a small spring and a cap here. Make sure you remember the exact configuration of these. And here's the diaphragm, it's pretty dried up, so it was just about time to replace it anyways. So now I'm going to remove the cap and the spring. And to clean my carburetor today, I'm going to stick it in this small ultrasonic cleaner. If you don't have an ultrasonic cleaner, you can spray carb cleaner all over it, let it soak for a while. Or you could soak the carburetor in a bucket of carb cleaner. And I'm going to manually clean this tube here after it comes out of the machine here. I'll leave this in here for approximately 45 minutes to an hour and hopefully she'll be clean after that. I wish it was a little bit bigger so that the tube and everything would fit in there. Okay, I've had it actually a couple hours in here. I did flip it to get the tube to get cleaned in there as well. And here it is. It's nice and clean. As you can see the solution in there is quite warm. So other than taking a bit of gasket material off, everything else looks nice and clean. So what I'm going to do now is let this carburetor dry nice and good. And then when I get the new tank, she'll be ready to put back on. And in the meantime, I'm just going to put the gasket that goes here once the carbs dry. And here's the new one here. And here's the part number 4272538. The part may be superseded to 272538 and the letter S at the end. What I'll do is I'll put a direct link to where you can buy this diaphragm online underneath this video. They're very inexpensive and they can make all the difference as to whether your machine will run properly or not. What I'm going to start with is the spring and the little cap that goes on it. I'm just going to stick it in here. Next I'm going to put the diaphragm right on top and as you can see the diaphragm is going to go in one of the pins here. Now you want to line up the holes on the diaphragm to the thread holes on the carburetor. And now you want to put the cover back on. Again, make sure everything is lined up. And now put in all the screws. Just screw them in by hand for now. And now you'll need a T15 screwdriver and tighten them up diagonally. As you can see, I just snugged the first one here. So I'm going to do this to all four screws. And again, I'm going to finish them off in a diagonal pattern. Sometimes too you don't need to take off the whole carburetor just to replace the little diaphragm. You can simply do it while it's on the machine. I finally got the new tank come in. I'm going to open it up and show you all the parts that were included with it. First of all the part number is 694315 from Briggs and Stratton. It's an OEM tank by the way. I'm going to put a link under this video to where you can directly buy one of these online. As you can see it's a different color while well, it's not painted so it's not a big deal. You can always spray paint it yourself if you want. Now this little box here comes with it. It's called a pre-pack and it's part number 693089. And I'll pull the tank right out. 
And don't forget the little papers inside. And I believe that these are instructions. And first I'll open up the pre-pack here. It's got gaskets, the fuel cap. And you even get a new set of screws with it. And you're going to get two gaskets. You're only going to need to use one. What you want to do is match up your old gasket to the right one that came with the package. And you get a nice new fuel cap. As I showed you previously, this one has rust on it. And here's a comparison of the two tanks. You want to make sure it's absolutely the same tank. It is in this case. And what I'm going to have to do is transfer this linkage here and the spring over to the new fuel tank. I'm going to start by removing this spring. And I'm going to reattach it to the new tank in the tab, exactly the way it was on the old tank. Previously I had tied the linkage just to keep it in its original position. It does make it a lot easier when you transfer it from the old tank to the new tank because you're going to know exactly which way it goes in. So to get it out I'm just going to move it and as you're going to see it's almost like doing a half turn and now it's going to come out. You just want to do the reverse to reinstall it. Sometimes during installation the linkage can come out of this mechanism so until it's hooked on the carburetor I'm going to leave this little twist tie here. And here's a look inside the fuel tank. You can see it's nice and new, it's not rusted and there is still foam and a piece of plastic inside this tank as well just like there was in the old tank. If you shake the tank you're going to hear these parts in there. That's perfectly normal, do not be alarmed by this. Now at this point in the operation you want to grab your gasket, put it over the carb like this. Just so it's easier for you to remember the wider part of the gasket faces this way on the carb. As you can see here the other side is dark. Again you want to make sure all the holes line up. As you can see this pin goes through this hole here in the gasket. I've got the fuel tank here facing as if it were on the machine. And this is the back end of the carburetor, so I'm just going to slide it in this hole here. Put the tube here with the screen on an angle, and then run it through. And I'll bring it in. Again, keep everything lined up. And I'm going to make sure that the carburetor is lined up with the holes on the tank and the holes in the gasket. So I'm going to start with one screw over here. I'm not going to tighten up the screw yet, I'm just going to get it started to line everything up. At this point here, I'm going to undo the zip tie that I used to keep the linkages together. And now on this part of the carb is where I'm going to use the long screw. Again, I'm not going to tighten it up, I'm just going to screw it in a little bit. Now you're going to need this tube with the rubber boot. Connect it in this part of the carburetor. And now you're going to need to put this screw on with the clamp. Sometimes I have to push in a little bit just to get through the gasket, but again, make sure all the holes are lined up properly first. And there's another screw that goes in this hole here. You may have to move the linkage just to get it in there. And you can put it in with a pair of pliers like this. And I'm going to snug all four screws in a diagonal pattern. Now that I've got all the four screws snugged, I'm just going to go around again in a diagonal pattern and finish tightening them up. Now I don't have the torque specs for this, but just use common sense. Don't over tighten them, but they do need to be fairly tight because there is a lot of vibration in this engine. So I'm just going to go over them once again. And that's good. Now at this point I'm going to put the throttle and choke mechanism on the fuel tank. And first of all, make sure you have your choke linkage in correctly. If yours has come off, I'll show you exactly how it goes back on here. Just take a look at how I'm holding it. Now this end here will go inside the plastic hole here and you turn it so it ends up being in this position here. Now what you want to do is grab the mechanism and insert the choke linkage on the top hole here. Now at this point you want to turn it again and you want to bring the mechanism to line up on the holes on the fuel tank. Also when you put this back on you want to make sure that the pin here from the throttle lever goes into this hole on this linkage. If you don't put it through there you're going to find that the throttle doesn't work once you have everything put back together. I've made that mistake myself before. And once you have all the screws tightened up this is how it's going to work. You're going to see that the pin is inside the hole. And now you're going to want to reach in and put in the new screws. I'm going to put my torque screwdriver on it and just tap it down a bit. Sometimes it's a bit tight going in because of the new gasket. And I'm going to hold the last screw with a pair of pliers and just line it up in there. And now you can test your choke. 
If it closes when you move this over here, then that's good. And now it's open, that's perfect. And again, here's the configuration of the linkages so far. Now if you turn the fuel tank over, you want to connect this linkage to this part over here. If you take a look at this nylon part, you can see there's a hole for the linkage to fit in there. So I'm going to put it on like this. I'm going to insert the linkage right in there. And basically you just push. So hold the metal part on the other side and it's going to go right in like that. And at this point I'm going to remove the tie wrap that I put on earlier. And I'm going to put a small amount of lithium grease over here so that everything slides better. Right on the track here. And a little bit inside here. You don't want to put too much because you don't want the dust to stick on there. Just a little film, then you can wipe off the excess. Once you've got it all back together like this, you're ready to put it back on the engine. Here's the engine. I'm going to reuse this gasket over here. The first thing you're going to want to do is hook up this spring again onto the engine. And it's going to hook up right in here. That's the first thing I'll be hooking up. So just go ahead down here and hook it up in there. And here's a view from the other side. This is how you want it in there. And now when you bring the tank up, it's just going to pivot around that, just like this. Now I'm just going to position the tank the way it should go in. I'm going to grab my switch wire from over here and the linkage. Now what you want to do is grab your switch wire over here. You want to press on the tab over here and get the wire right in there. There's a small hole, just shove it in there. And now you can release and you want the wire to be tight in there. Previously I took this bolt here off so it's still loose, I can undo it by hand. The reason for that is to hook up the last linkage. Now I'm going to grab the last linkage down here and it's going to go in that hole over here, right there. Now when you're doing this, don't force that piece of plastic because it could break. Now don't tighten up this bolt, just snug it for now. I'm going to wait till the carburetor and the tank are where they should be on the engine. At this point, this is the configuration of these linkages. Now this is the plastic part I've been putting on. And now you can tighten up the bolt, it's a 5 16 And I'm using a ratcheting wrench for this. And once the bolt is tightened up, make sure that everything moves freely. And now you want to line up the fuel tank and the intake holes right over here. And I'll put the bolts in. It's a bit tight in there. And now with the number T30 torque screwdriver, just start the bolt. You may have to move everything just to line it up properly. There we go. And now to get the other bolt on, I'm going to have to go underneath here. The other hole is way over here, so it's a bit tricky. Sometimes you can put this on after to give you more space to get in there. I'm going to go from under here and go on the head of that bolt and then just basically tighten it up from here. Now you want to make sure you tighten up these two bolts evenly but for now I'm just going to leave them snug, they're not tight. Before you tighten up those bolts you want to put the 3 8 bolt under here. So you want to line up the tank bracket to the hole on the engine. Now reach in there and put that bolt on. For this I'm going to use a U-joint, it works really good when you're in an awkward position, a 3 8 socket, an extension and a quarter inch ratchet. Once I've got it in I'm just going to go straight in with the ratchet and the socket. There's room for that now. Just tighten it up fairly tight. Now I'm going to tighten up the left screw here. And I'm going to reach underneath again with my ratcheting wrench and finish off the other bolt. Now even though I had put the boot here, it did come off. I didn't notice that this here has to go in another boot down here. So I loosened the torque screw again. And now what you want to do is insert the pipe in this boot down here where my screwdriver is. Now grab the pipe, insert it in the boot. And here's a view of that boot from the side of the engine. That's where you want the pipe to be in. Make sure you've got this boot on here. And I'll put this one here on the carb. And now I'm just going to retighten up that screw. It doesn't really matter which order you do this in, you just have to make sure that the pipe is connected on both ends. 
So now basically just make sure everything's nice and secure, make sure everything's working here. Now you want to put this plate here, line up the holes. And now you want to get all these little bolts back in. I've already put the two over here. You can put the choke on just in case a bolt falls in, then it won't go inside the carburetor. And now just tighten up the bolts evenly. Now I'm going to put a new air filter cartridge. By the way, the part number for this is 491588. And for your convenience, I'll put a link under the video to where you can buy one directly online. And by the way, there's also a pre-filter inside the cover. Make sure that this is clean as well. And I'm just going to install that cover. Again, you can use your nut driver for this. And that's all there is to installing the fuel tank. So at this point, you're all done installing the new fuel tank on your 5 horsepower Briggs and Stratton engine. Now I'm going to put some fuel in it and start it up. Now I've got it choked and she's ready to go. I'm glad it runs good. There shouldn't be any more problems with the carburetor getting dirty anymore with that new tank. And once you've ran it for a while, just double check everything to make sure all the bolts are tight. And as long as you keep it stored properly by keeping the tank full of fuel all the time, it should not rust again and you should be problem free. As you saw, it's not that hard to replace the fuel tank. Just remember to have a lot of patience when you do this job. Make sure all the linkages are connected properly and the little spring underneath the fuel tank as well. Make sure that it's connected on there properly. Thanks for watching guys. Make sure to subscribe and you can see me in my next video. Have a nice day.